Zero accounting software. Accounts receivable agent report. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in a bit, holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175% zoom in opening the demo company doing so with the reset button resetting the data and open the demo at the same time we're then going to duplicate some tabs up top to put some reports in right clicking on the tab up top to do so this is what we've been doing every time right clicking on the duplicated tab duplicating it again back to the middle tab we're going to go to the accounting drop down, open up the major financial statement, the balance sheet report tab to the right. Accounting drop down, opening up the income statement, profit and loss report. Back to the tab to the left. We're going to change the dates up top, customizing them, bringing it up to 2022. And then I'll update that report. Scrolling in a bit back to 175 tab to the right that's what we've been doing every time these are the major two financial statement reports now we're taking a look at some of the subsidiary reports as we do so don't get overwhelmed because you can think of these other reports as basically giving you more information as on one or multiple line items of these major financial statement reports so i'm going to right click and duplicate the tab again and open up another report accounting drop down reports this time we want to uh, have the AR accounts receivable aging report. So I'm going to scroll on down to where it says payables and receivables. We've got two receivable agings. We've got the receivable aging detail and the summary report. Let's, let's open up the summary report first and check that out. And so this one, as it would indicate, I'm going to hit the drop down, customize the date and say that we want to go to 31st, update it. So there we have it. So as would be indicated by the accounts receivable in the name, this is giving more information on the balance sheet account of accounts receivable. So if I go back to the balance sheet and we scroll down to the accounts receivable, this account is one representing the fact that customers owe us money. It goes up with invoices, it goes down uh, when the invoices are paid, when we receive money from the invoices. If we look at our chart of accounts here, I'm sorry, our flow chart on the sales cycle, the accounts receivable is part of the sales revenue or accounts receivable cycle, which at the end of the day, we expect money to be increasing our checking account. Typically, if we have a very simplified business, we might just have gig work. We wait till like YouTube pays us or something. And then we just uh, increase it with a bank feed and basically a deposit form at that time. But we might have a cash register situation, in which case we can't really wait till something clears the bank before reporting it, but rather report it at the point of sale, although still a cash based system. And, and or we have an accrual system, one in which, and this would be driven by industry typically, we have to do the work first, like a bookkeeper, like a law firm, like a landscaping company. And this then increases the accounts receivable and records sales at this point in time. And then we're of course looking to collect on the accounts receivable so that we can actually get the cash. So you would only have accounts receivable if you had an accrual accounting system for the revenue cycle, which you would only have if you're in an industry where you typically do the work first and then bill the customer. And that kind of system, then for small companies, of course, you're gonna track your own uh, businesses and the bookkeepers uh, might, you know, of course, be involved in that process. The larger the company gets, you can have whole uh, departments that are in 
their service of basically managing the accounts receivable, trying to collect on the accounts, accounts receivable and so on. So if you have this number and I drill down on the accounts receivable, going into basically the general ledger, the transaction detail report, it gives me more information, but it gives it to me by date. That's not as useful for most of our practical purposes because what we want to know is this information not by date of transactions but by who owes us the money so if i go back then oftentimes we go to the first tab and we in practice when we're managing our accounts we're going to go into say the business drop down into the invoices here and we can manage the invoices that are awaiting payment for example and this is this is basically if they're invoices awaiting payment these are you would expect the sum of these outstanding invoices to add up to the accounts receivable on the balance sheet although we don't get a total in this format this is the way that we can practically sort our data when we're trying to get collections on it or send out statements related to it uh, or we can go to the contact drop down and we can go to the customers so we're in the customers in the contact drop down and so now we can see the the people that owe us money basically in this format as well and go into an individual uh an individual customer that owes us money and get more detail there then from a reporting standpoint it's useful to see that information who owes us the money which is basically the total here in our aged receivable which ties out to the total that's on the balance sheet that's nice because now we can really see how these things are linked together that nine thousand. 172.63 ties out to what's on the balance sheet here as of the same date back to the aged receivable uh, but uh, if i was talking to a customer i might go into the customer themselves or the open invoices why i might use this report in practice would be that it gives you this nice breakout between how old something is so 1 to 30 days 31 to 60 days and 61 to 90 days or older than that uh, could, could help us with multiple things. One, it helps us to kind of crack down on some of these customers to try to collect what is outstanding if we have a customer that has some stuff that's quite old and to determine whether or not we're gonna do business with them in the future if they haven't paid us for the business that we have done uh, in the past. It also could help us to calculate our allowance accounts if we're using kind of an allowance method for writing off bad debts because as these debts get older we would assume we're less and less likely to get paid on them and from an accrual standpoint if you look at your balance sheet here this asset account this is an asset account accounts receivable and if you have a lot of stuff in there that you don't think you're actually going to get paid from because it's old we really should for fair reporting write it down with an allowance account to show the fact that yeah that my accounts receivable is that but i expect that there's going to be less than that that we're going to receive due to the fact that some of them are old and so that's just the way business goes sometimes we're not going to get paid on all of it most likely and so we won't get into the allowance method right now we have whole courses on that if, if that's something you want to look at but you've got the direct write-off method and the allowance method and this and then you can calculate the allowance account multiple times with the sales or the accounts receivable aging but this is one form you could use in that uh, as well now this is the standard layout of it if i go up top we've got the date of course of of the report now this is reporting as of a point in time account like a balance sheet account as as opposed to a performance account but it does have a timing nature to it like an income statement account which is a timing account because it's showing when the activity basically happened and then you've got the date drop down so so you've got the sorting by usually you sort by the due date but you could sort by the invoice date so when you enter the invoice into the system that's the invoice date usually you're going to expect to get paid sometime within like the next 30 days so you'd set the due date so usually your aging down here is going to be based on the due date now these are the default settings which are quite common but you could change them you could say maybe i don't want three periods maybe i want four periods that are 30 days apart so we're going to say apply and update so now we've adjusted the periods we could you know say that we want to uh, say instead of 30 days make something other than 30 days weeks months and so on and so forth but that's the standard format so we'll keep it there 
uh, three columns selected. So with the columns, you could add more information here. So available credit, contact account number, contact group, credit limit, email, mobile phone, outstanding tax, uh, tax, phone, primary reason, region. So for example, if you wanted to use this report to kind of contact people and you're gonna print it out or something and have someone call them or something like that, you can add the email or send an email out. We can add the email. And so now you've got kind of like a contact list that's tied into your report as well. So you got some customization options. So you've got your grouping. Uh, so, so you've got the items down here, available credit, contact group, and so on. And then you've got your filtering options by region if you've got your regions you know set up which is kind of a specialty kind of area setting up your information and sorting your information by region as we talked about and saw when we looked at the balance sheet and the general kind of formatting tools that might be available to you with many different reports so that's the overall report for uh the aging here then i'm going to duplicate it and let's just take a look at the the detailed aging accounting dropdown reports and let's scroll on down to the aging detail account going into that one por favor drop down let's bring it on up to to uh, the end of the 31st okay so you've got a similar type of report but now it's going to give you some of the activity which is going to be the outstanding invoices so now it's giving you then the uh, name of the customer but instead of just giving the totals then broken out by how, how old something is it's giving you the activity the invoices that are outstanding constructing them so this one this one has multiple invoices outstanding breaking them out by how old they are here so just a little bit more detail similar kind of report so the basic idea you want to think about with the receivable account is that you've got the balance sheet receivable represents people owing us money it's only going to be there if we have an accrual method meaning we use invoices because we do the work first generally collect on it later so we have to worry about collecting the data and then we'll manage the collection of the data with of course our tools over here our invoices sorting our invoices and our contact our customer contacts over here but we can also think about uh, who owes us the money is the basic idea of that, which we can see more formally in a report, breaking out the customers that owe us that money so that we can actually contact them and try to collect on it, as well as the aging, which gives us another factor in a report format that's easier to see than oftentimes in non-report format that tells us how old stuff are that we can use for multiple reasons to determine how we can collect from those individuals, whether we want to do business with certain individuals, and if we're trying to calculate what the actual value of our accounts receivable is based on how likely we're going to collect on it using kind of an allowance method, we've got the receivable aging reports.